my name is Susan O'Connor. I'm a game writer, a freelance game writer. I have worked with uh, several different studios, Microsoft, Ubisoft, um, Activision, Sega, uh, I don't even know who else. Um, I've worked on Far Cry 2, Bioshock 1, Bioshock 2, uh, a few other titles people might have heard of, and that's my story. How do we do this? I don't know. Um, this isn't my thing. I'm Marianne Krasik. <laughs> I am a f freelance game writer. I've worked with um, most of the publishers, Ubisoft, Activision, yeah. um, the group, most notably the Sony people on the God of War franchise, um, and a few other titles that you may or may not have heard of. And that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> In the six or seven years I've been doing this, um, the writer has been uh, has been become a more key component. You see more writers on staff at, at places. Um, I certainly see more integration early on. I think people are starting to recognize the value of story because when you engage, gameplay is fun and emotional. But I think you can get more mileage out of that gameplay with a, with a. Um, a good narrative. So, and I think that it is. I mean, I think there are titles like Heavy Rain and Uncharted, and certainly that Batman, the Batman yeah. uh, title, that's amazing. hugely amazing. And people, I think, love it. And I think that's just going to continue to grow. And, and I think publishers are, and developers are finally really recognizing that. So. Yeah, and I think what it seems like, and I wish I'd said this in the talk. Actually, it seems like. Um, people across the board are understanding each other's jobs much more at a much deeper level. So I feel like as a writer, I understand game design more than I did a few years ago. Right. And I can think about what their concerns are. And I also hear, it's like GDC, game designers talking about writing and story in an incredibly intelligent way. Clearly they've been spending their time learning about writing. And I, hopefully we've been learning their job and we can just have a better, more useful communication conversation that, that's that's actually sorry that's a huge shift because what yeah. I've noticed is people taking like the Robert McKee course and the course is about writing a structure and and narrative that you wouldn't have seen. five ten years ago you would have never seen people are just yeah. like whatever but I think people are actually engaging uh, and more of the jobs I go to people have at least at least done their homework on story and I try to do my homework on design and so I don't know is there any advantage absolutely <laughs> there is yeah there uh, and this is what I'm running into a lot which is there's a business advantage when you want to do cross narrative um, so or cross right. media sorry with your narrative so building as strong of a narrative in the game to entice studios and you know publishers of, of comic books and other otherwise you know to yeah I think there's a big business thing to build the franchise um, through story because because it's going to naturally cross over to pure narrative um, mediums yeah. yeah, and I think also that writers just think about, but they have to, to do their job, have to think about how stories work. And there's just a lot of, I think, foundational work uh, that's invisible to someone who just sort of takes in a story. There's a lot of things you have to think about that by definition the end user shouldn't see or think about or be aware of, but that's what makes a story work. It's like the foundation, the load-bearing walls in the house. When you walk into a house, you just want to sort of have a comfortable chair to sit in and a window. You don't need to know about how the plumbing works or the air ducts, but someone had to think about that to make that home what it is. And I think the same metaphor works really well with writing. I think what you'd want to get from a writer is a good dialogue more than anything. I think you want a writer who's confident enough that they can sort of present their story and concepts and then work with the studio to integrate with the game design. I think you'd want someone who, who like A, understands story and B, can communicate story. That's what you want in a way that people who are not writers can understand and collaborate with them. Right. Does that yes. make sense? Yeah. Because, I yeah, I mean, they've got to be able to speak intelligently about their craft with people who don't, aren't writers themselves. Right, and a certain knowledge of games. And, well, I, mean, right. I mean, I think, well, I, that's a huge issue in terms of I've run into a lot of people that use writers of uh, film and stuff, and they're great writers, but they don't always understand games the way they should. Um, which is easy enough. If you don't play, just to read a walkthrough. I mean, that is extremely informational about you know, whatever you're doing and whatever kind of world you're building. So I think that helps. So I think the writer really needs to do their homework. And I think um, talking to them and, and seeing if they understand the space, because it is a completely different thought process and exactly the same at the same time. It's the weird, I don't know how else to explain it. So, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think you have to look for someone who's experienced. Yeah. It's, it's, I, think, I think game writing is a very counterintuitive That felt process. like a plug. Well, yeah. We are experienced. <laughs> <laughs> but it, well, I mean, you can hire an inexperienced writer, but right. th there's going to be a much longer ramp up. Just like an, an inexperienced game designer is yeah. going to have a lot to learn. Right. So it's, yeah. it's that said, it's, they're cheaper, but you'll spend up probably the same amount of money for the amount of time you got to spend right. getting them up to speed. I think the best way for a writer to prepare for a career writing in games is to look at the, what's the best of the best right now and do like an analysis of those games. 
Why do they work? What's going on here? Like really try and get in the head of the designers and really try to understand what's, why is this game compelling? Um, I think that doing it a bit of an analysis, uh, sort of putting yourself through a course almost of learning um, uh, how to critique game writing would be a huge eye opener because I think what makes a story work in a game is very different than what makes a story work in another medium. And when it's washing over you, it feels the same because it's, it's playing on the same basic emotions, mm -hmm. of course. But the ways in which they are pulling out those emotions, they're doing it very differently. And I think that would be a good first step for a writer to decide if games is the right medium for them. Right. I would actually, because I've, I've been thinking about this a little bit uh, for teaching, mm -hmm. and I think if you took a, a, an established story, say Hamlet, which would be really hard to make a game, and think about making it a game. Like take the whole narrative and what he experiences and just do that and write it as an open world, or, you know, write it as leveled linear narrative, write it as all sorts of different kinds of, you know, strategic game, what, however you want to do it. But take something that, because oftentimes you will be given the story that you need to figure out how to make work within the game space. So um, just take, take an old, you know, Treasure Island or so, any, any old public domain kind of story that's out there and try to make it your own. And, and that could actually work as a sample for people to look at too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, in fact, speaking of samples, I don't know if this would be helpful, but someone just asked me this question. How could I generate good writing samples for when I get into the industry? And I was suggesting do a critique of a game and also, like, every game has levels that are cut in production, so you could write the missing level for a game. So maybe you love oh, Bioshock yeah, yeah. and one of the levels was cut. Imagine the level was cut. What would happen at that level? How would the story progress in that level? And right. then write that script. Right. That's a, that's a take, fun exercise. Existing, existing kind of... Right. Because the other thing is people don't always want to look at original work because there's a... Right. There is a, Sorry about that. Sometimes <laughs> there's legal issues with original work, so right. you have to be careful on how to uh, submit samples. Yeah.